Thank you very much. So after David sets up a perfect storm of billions of people watching all of this footage, somehow we have to uh, get this from all of your wonderful venues into Sky and then back out. Sky I've got, Sky Go, Sky.com, our normal platform. We've got YouTube, Twitter. We've got all of these routes through. But unless we find good enough content, then, uh, well, our subscribers and everyone who wants to view this stuff aren't going to appreciate it very much. So um, <coughs> to give you a, a brief introduction to myself, I'm head of operations. All of Sky's output somehow falls under me, my team, um, to as efficiently get to the customers as we can. That's across worldwide golf, tours, cricket, the f all the football that we're obviously going to speak about coming up. Uh, and that's the connectivity right through to the um, user experience in case they're doing red button or some other system like that. So the uh, area that I'm going to discuss today is Soccer Saturday, which uh, apologies for the non-football uh, members here, but I'm pretty sure most people will understand what it is anyway. Uh, it's pretty much a stable part of uh, Saturday viewing for a lot of people, especially if you don't want to do football focus. It's set up to do a different, um, a different view. It's on Sky Sports uh, News and simulcast during the uh, actual match times on Sky One. Started in uh, way back in '92, and most people probably can't believe that Sky's been going that long. It always seems like the new kid. Uh, it's called Sports Saturday then, and rebranded in 1998 to be Soccer Saturday. And it is pretty much known, I'm not, obviously I've been with Sky for 18 months, but I'll, I'll brag like I've been there forever, but it is known for, for the style that it does and the, and the approach that it takes to how it does its reporting. It wants to keep it light, but it wants to be quick and it wants to move with whatever story. It doesn't want to be, feel like it's too fixed. Hosted by the, the wonderful Jeff. And it, uh, just an interesting fact here, directed by Karen Wilmington, who's uh, been almost, she was at, Pain to tell me that it's actually 18 years and not 20, but I've pushed for 20. Uh, and voted as the 41st most influential woman in sports, as well as directing it, she does head up the Sky Sports News studio, so all the looks, everything that happens there. And it's, uh, there aren't many women in power in sports, but uh, it's pleasing to see that at Sky we do, with all the stuff that's been reported about Sky over the years, it's good to see that we are pushing on. The uh, format of the show, in case you don't know, Four pundits sit in the, in the studio, along with Jeff presenting. And due to the restrictions with uh, UEFA laws in uh, showing sports during a certain time frame, you can't actually see any action. So the uh, innovative way that they did way back then was to have them viewing the games uh, in front of them. So you couldn't see at home, but you could just see their reactions. So there are always four games in front, one for each pundit. Um, there's some technology going on behind to make it kind of look like they're there. Probably stuff that you've, you've watched but you've never really thought about, but the fans in the background, that's content we need to acquire. So you have to get the content for them in the screen, and then we've got to shoot them and get that out to the uh, audience at home. So they have the full pundit pundits watching the games, and then we have between 12 and 16, depending on what kind of game it is, at the games, standing again so you can't see any action. It's, it's have to go at great guns to make sure that the camera doesn't show any pitch at all. You can't even see a corner flag. Uh, and the reporters then, as you will probably know, look something like that <laughs> uh, and have the uh, yeah, glamorous job of standing in all kinds of weather, in all kinds of conditions, as Claire will probably uh, probably been out there in the field once or twice and I'll just uh, show you a quick video of some of the uh, some of the bits if I can of what happens Today, my boys Hyde United or oh, Hyde uh, Tower of Big Hyde Hyde <laughs> <laughs> What a save, 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 the ball goes to uh, Jojovic, 
Yoko Vic is a hole. Step forward. <laughs> it, gets to, it gets to him and he flicks it into the box. <laughs> and he's hit it. Crisp as a nut, half volley, and it's so much power past making it 2 2. Crisp as a nut. The game's just been abandoned. Bianca Westwood. <laughs> I can barely hear you. It's like a, it's like a hurricane here. The match has been abandoned, the conditions are awful, um, and the ref just called the game off at 2-3. I don't know if you can hear me, I can't hear anything, but um, yeah, that's it, match abandoned, it's all over, I'm going home. Chris Kamara is naked, <laughs> at least facially. <laughs> <laughs> you see, <laughs> I've grown it overnight. <laughs> it's a false mustache, <laughs> Kamara. You're... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure the last waltz is part of Chris Kamara's repertoire, is it, Cammy? I had the last waltz with you, two lonely people without you. He didn't do anything, he fluffed it, he got his legs on the wrong feet. I tell you, that's a real issue for him as well, if he's got his legs on the wrong feet. It's, it's pretty even, but, well, not pretty even, because Sunderland is slightly on top. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty even, but standing on your own top. I think Jeff, he's sent Ivanovic off. No, no, he hasn't, no, because the play's, play's carried on. But Ivanovic was going absolutely crazy. He's still on the pitch, Jeff. There hasn't been a sending off. <laughs> and I just have a quick look over my shoulder, Jeff, see who's taking it. And it's Santon who's taking that penalty. It's not Santon, sorry, my apologies. Santon plays for Newcastle. Um, it's. Um, one of the Sunderland players, and he scored, Jeff. Cuperini with his right foot, Jeff, into the top corner. It's 1-0 to Sunderland. <laughs> Mad, mental, <laughs> and that's just Cammy. So, uh, yeah, you can see, obviously, those are a few select moments of, uh, of what happens, but they're trying to make it light. It's, you can't see any content, rather than just a ticker going along the whole time. Try and add something in there. But, as I said, getting all of that content to our viewers is a bit of a challenge. Um, we have two main uh, avenues of getting content to our, our viewers. The first being what we would have as our main sports channels. If we take aside the sports news reporting and, and anything around that, we have our thousand, roughly a thousand UK-based OBs. So that's across everything that we do, and that's the main match coverage That'll come in through a fibre system, which is, uh, this is before ADI World I'm talking about here. It's a dual path allowing redundancy, technical elements of it. Basically, if we have a problem, we've got another route out. Uh, it's costly, it's because it, we're having two paths everywhere we go. It's very secure, it's reliable, but it is restricted in the number of venues that we've got. So that'll be venues that we go more than five times a year. That product is available to us. Then we have a satellite product, which allows some redundancy, but it is open to the elements and we get wind issues regularly. And as you imagine, over the past few months, we've had a few issues on that one. It's pretty cost effective. We can deploy it where we want. And that is the product that you'll see normal news, normal Sky News taken off as well, because you can just go wherever you want. So um, when we do uh, 50, or when we do anywhere between 20, 30, 40, venues during transfer deadline day or, or uh, FL72, something like that, then that's when we have satellite because we need to go to the training ground, wherever the news story is. And then there's the new uh, push, which I've got some of my technology guys here, will always groan whenever we head down this route, but 3G, 4G, it does have its use for very, very quick deployment. You'll see in a lot of the news now, around the world before we can even think about getting a proper satellite fly pack in. You'll see the first few Im images, and you've seen it in Malaysia recently, <laughs> will be coming over any kind of mobile content. Ukraine, a lot of the content will come over that. Uh, just to get something out before we can put a proper system in. It's quickly deployed, it is lower quality, and it is mobile signal dependent. So with news, they tend to fare a little bit better than us in sports news, because all these venues, there are 60, 70, 80,000 people all trying to use the phone at the same time. So we can't use that product. Well, not reliably anyway. So this is the kind of split we use for those main OBs. Largely, it's fibre. So this is our 
core content, the, the match coverage of all of our games, pretty much largely connected because we know where we're going. We've got our rights for multiple years. We're going to these venues. We have that product in place. Satellite will be for leagues that we don't go to quite so often. And then the 3G, 4G, it is starting to make some impact now. Quite often, if we've got a second game, two games running on at the same time, we'll have the main game, and we'll still get content coming in from the other routes. But then for sports news, it's a different story. We've got a small fiber base because we don't know where we're going to go, so they don't have quite such a regular uh, outing. Satellites, easily deployed, we go exactly where the news story is. And then the 3G is a much bigger chunk because we will, for very small pieces of news, things like transfer deadlines days, when we just want to pop, get a two minute bite or FTP something back because we don't always do live material. There's only so much you can get on air. A lot happens at exactly the same time. So we will try and bring some content in, store and forward as it's known. We shoot it, forward it on, bring it in and then play it in afterwards. So that can be done over the mobile network. We are finding now, though, that new opportunities, and obviously the reason we're all sat here is because of one of these new opportunities, uh, we need to expand the number of technology options we've got. And we always, across everything we do, it's one of the things since I've joined Sky I've seen, we always seek diversity. Every, every possible route we can take, something will go wrong. We do OBs, they're in the snow, the weather, the public, something will cause us a problem. And in everything we do, with all our cameras, right the way through to how we broadcast from Sky, we look for diversity. And we don't have a lot of diversity in the product market at the moment. We also want to make sure there's good competition. I'm not going to overly name competitors of ADI, but there are products out there which have been in a monopoly for quite a while, um, so much so that the market has put in uh, rules to try and break it up a little bit. And we're now finally seeing a little bit of market growth with new opportunities coming in. And this is probably off the back of domestic fiber. It's your wishes at home for super fast broadband, which is, it is getting a fair push on. You're probably whinge if you're still in the countryside, but it will come in time. And even though that stat seems quite low, 900 homes, only, well, yeah, almost one in 10, uh, getting 30 meg down in speed or higher, that is going up and that's, You'll see from the next um, slide. What this does is because it's not being used all the time and because the uh, fiber companies tend to be putting in more than they really need, it does add a little bit of growth for us. So how many, uh, how many people here are uh, part of a venue, or an actual stadium or, or part of a venue? So how many of you can plot yourself in the blue on that? Uh, that marker. This, when we first started having conversations around connecting with a new partner, we started to have a look at how the country was getting connected. And it's clear that most of the places that sport go to are falling somewhere within there. It covers the, the northeast and northwest, London, the Midlands, Leeds, through Wales. It's got the core places, Glasgow, Edinburgh. It's, it's what we need is is kind of there and you see that this pattern is starting to build up and actually maybe we can, Sky can start to take advantage of this and get a more affordable product for a lot of the content we want to get in. So we needed, I've got, as you can imagine, behind Sky a lot of very talented and very um, motivated editorial teams who want to get content across all of our platforms as quickly as possible. And our subscribers really want content as quickly as we can. I mean, to the point where with, the, with our, our goal service, because of how Sky, if you're a viewer at home and you watch Sky on, on um, up against the BBC, you'll see that there's a slight delay in getting signals up to a satellite back down to your box. So we make sure that when we do our score updates, we can still be comparable with the BBC's terrestrial service, which doesn't take as long to get to the viewer at home. And we're talking you know, parts of a second. The guys want to make sure that when you're watching Sky, you're seeing that content as quickly as possible. And as each rights negotiation happens, there is more and more content being created. I mean, uh, Nick's here from the Premier League, and we'll talk about it in a bit, but 
this year, the Premier League has freed up an enormous amount more content that we weren't having before. It's put rules in place which allow us to get interviews on the day. There's press conferences, there's mix zones. There's, there's content which we can previously could have got but didn't know for sure if we were going to get. So couldn't build products, couldn't build websites and allow parts of our schedule to be able to show. But now we get much better ideas earlier on in our rights discussions what we're going to be made available. So if you're having that rights discussion, it's more likely that the lawyers at the Sky end will have been speaking to somebody like myself to work out if we can expand what's on offer and well, exercise every possible right that's available in the package to be able to give us more for our viewers. You all want more money for the rights, which is understandable, and we want to make sure that we can get as much out of that. So there's a balance. Uh, when it came down to the uh, Football League uh, discussions, which was pretty probably the first project since I joined Sky that we were take through from beginning to end, the grounds we know in the Championship, we know we're going pretty often. The Championship is quite a heavy part of Soccer Saturday, as well as the Prem. It's a good balance. It's the right amount of content, and a bit of from League One and League Two with some of the bigger themes. And our requirements for Soccer Saturday have been the same for, you know, if it, it fills the audience like it, so we know that we could put a product into those and not have to rely on satellite because we would be pretty sure we could use as much content as we can. And there's quite a lot of Football League outside the wafer window, outside the three o'clock window, that means we can do much more quicker turnaround. So Soccer Saturday right now, here's a, um, a small shot. We've got 26 lines um, coming into Sky on a Saturday at three o'clock. Most of that content is the um, known as the Envisioned or kind of known as Kamara Cam, but that's not officially what we call it. Um, so there'll be the, the venues with the Envisioned on them, and you can see there's a couple there. That obviously, um, this goes on much wider, but it's just a snapshot to show you. And then there are single camera coverages from a lot of the championship games so that we can get that content in. Previously, it might take us for maybe till 11 o'clock that evening to be able to get the content in in a traditional delivery method. But by putting in a cost-effective system, we could get the, the goals and the action from these venues live and be able to use them much earlier. They're still restricted. So on a soccer Saturday, we're still restricted from showing those goals, but we can show them at the second that we're allowed to rather than having to wait for the content to come in another method. And also it means that the reporters, the Envision reporters, the satellite trucks that used to do those, we can now deploy elsewhere. So other leagues that, that want to be covered or other events on the day, we can ex spread ourselves much further across all the sports rather than it just be limited to the championship taking up quite a heavy amount of workload. The, uh, the uh, back office staff that help look after all of this stuff, there's an amazing amount. You, s you talk about the uh, YouTube stuff of getting uh, Felix, getting the signals back from Felix, all that highs up. We can have just as much of a problem getting signals from Leeds, and it's one of the problems that we've been seeing over the years. No one's been coming up with a solution. So when we got a feeling that ADI was going to become good with the live venue, it was something we really wanted to push on because we go to these places all the time and we have problems at them. They're regular. They're not going to go away. They're the leagues are pretty solid as to how they are. It take a couple of years for someone to fall out of the spectrum, so you know you're going to be there. We wanted a reliable product that meant we could go there and cut down our workload. The amount of work it takes to send 12 satellite trucks to a venue every weekend to be able to do the envisioned and get the match coverage back again is a huge amount, which we should be able to deploy somewhere else. This is what the system allowed us to do. It allowed us to know that there was a box there. We wouldn't have to about worry about parking, the weather, whether or not the satellite truck could see outside, whether or not it's going to break down. For regular work, we, we're OK with those risks around the more news elements because there's an inherent risk. But if we're expecting goals every weekend and envisioned every weekend, we need something was there. That said, when I go back to the, uh, the original slide of that fully secure, dual redundant path, that comes with quite an expense. I'm not in any way playing down the security of the ADI system. We're in early days, but it was a, it's the product is geared slightly differently in that we, we can handle 
a little bit more issues with it because the viewer, instead of losing an entire football game, might lose an envision from one of the grounds. Now, I'll still get shouted at back at Sky, but it does actually give me an opportunity to offer a lot more product for the same price instead of having one or two and being stuck, not being able to offer the full, um, full weekend. So there are cost savings or in the sky way, we just redeploy that money elsewhere and it gets spent in another way. It never actually comes back, no matter what, what you offer. They just want more and more and more. So this is an opportunity really for us to take all of the content that we're expecting to get anyway, bring it in a much more efficient way, get it into sky live and without too much workload so that we can then redeploy the resource that was managing that to bring new content in and we expand the content available to our subscribers anymore, even more. It's our subscribers really at the end of the day that keep us all of in work and keep this whole industry moving on. So we want to make sure that they're given a new product as quickly as we can. So then what next? We, uh, the league, um, the football league deal expands over all of the, all of the leagues. So we've just finished doing the championship or just finishing doing the championship now. Uh, this is the first year of us moving into this. And then we're now looking to expand into League One, League Two. Um, we've been doing goal turnaround shows, which have never been done before, really. Which so on a non-Saturday three o'clock, we can show the goals immediately. Um, and any we're looking at any sport that we can do that, where our rights allow us to, and where the rights owners want us to, then we can exploit the material a lot earlier and get the immediacy of the results out there instead of it just being news reported and then shown in highlight shows much later. We can, we can follow stories as they go. We can see things develop that previously we, we just have to wait for the news to come in. Uh, other venues, new sports. The cloud-based editing is another, uh, obviously there's so much content. The viewer can only see what, they, uh, what we can get in at any one time. And the Saturday, that, that, that window is quite rammed as it is. We're looking for a lot more content outside of that. But during that window, there's a, a much more stacking system, so we don't need to bring everything into Sky and see it all at the same time during that window. We can leave some of it in a cloud-based system and just take the bits we want as the new story develops. But previously, we'd have to wait for that to be fed. We'd have to wait for the eng camera guy to get to a playout center or find a satellite truck or FTP it. We can at least know it's sat there, and if a new story develops, if there's a, if there's a huge incident at, a, at uh, one place, that just kind of moves on. The manager says something in his post-match uh, press conference or in the post-match interviews that actually stirs something up. We want to know that we can go back in there, find that material, and not have to wait for the material the next day or 11 o'clock that night when our viewers have moved on. Uh, and the pooling of the resource, all of this has, has cost, and the, the industry is limited in the number of people. It's, a, it's probably a, a debate for another session, which is uh, how we keep bringing more talent into the industry because we can create all of this, these avenues, all these connectivities, uh, but we don't necessarily have the talent to be able to take it and make it into a high quality product. What we don't want to do is, is, is cut the quality so that the viewers start to see poor quality coverage in any way. We want to make sure it's high. And part of doing that could be pooling our resources with other like-minded companies in order to uh, get the most out of it, but we're keeping the cost back. We are finding that we're turning up to venues and we're shooting exactly the same thing because the content's available now. People are just sending everything they can and we need to make sure that we're as efficient as possible with those things. So that's uh, how Soccer Saturday pretty much operates. There's probably individual questions about what we actually do behind the scenes with Soccer Saturday. There's um, chance during the Q&A if you want to throw questions at me then. But uh, yeah, there you go.